We will, however, move on to the main event. Of course, Fast Spa versus Birmingham Uni, that's while you're here. So, on one side you have Spa, named after a supermarket. And on the other side you have Brum, named after a sentient car from my childhood. <laughs> Who's going first in the first round? Coletti, on one hand, and... Who's up? Liz. Liz. I, I clearly have the names of the teams written on my piece of paper. You said Liz? Yeah. Cool. So, our, our first round is Sean Coletti v Liz Greenfield. And of course, because Birmingham's first, please show your appreciation for the... I don't even have a rhyme. He's from California. His name's Sean. Sean Coletti is the first... <laughs> Uh, I wrote this poem about 10 minutes ago, so bear with me. Actually, I wrote this poem instead of doing my coursework because I'm lazy and proud of it. I was sitting in Starbucks because that's obviously the most pretentious way to write poetry. Uh, I was wearing a beret and smoking from a pipe. People kept staring. I wrote this poem on our third date, and you leaned over and said, Ah, what you got there? And I said, Nothing. And you said, Bullshit, nothing. And I said, What? It's nothing. And you were pissed off the rest of the night. And we both knew we weren't going to have sex, but you know what? I didn't care because it was our third date, and my poem was obviously more interesting than you anyway. <laughs> I wrote this poem because I don't know how to rap. Uh, but if I did, I'd be making millions with my ill lyrics. Yo, yeah, motherfuckers, high five that shit. <laughs> no? I wrote this poem because you told me to stop using repetition in my poetry. I wrote this poem because my mom said that I could be whatever I want to be when I grow up, and I wanted to be Alan fucking Ginsberg. I wrote this poem from my backyard, lying down on a lawn chair, a cold beer in one hand, my iPod in the other playing Tupac and Vicky, because I don't care about East and West, North and South, and them. All I care about is how the beats match the rhythm of everything around me. The Blue Jays' wings flapping in sync with To Live and Die in L.A. My neighbor going back and forth with his lawnmower to picture me rolling. I care about how the beer feels sliding down the back of my throat. Like a line of kids on a playground pretending to be firemen sliding down a pole, their bare feet hitting the warm sand. I wrote this poem for that one guy. Where is he? You. Yeah, you. I wrote this poem for you, who doesn't even read poetry, who doesn't see Keats sitting in the chair in his front yard every time you hear the word nightingale. I wrote this poem for you, because you walk around all day with your hands in your pockets looking at the concrete cracks. I wrote this poem for you because you probably read more poetry than I do. You read it in the sound of your fingers smashing the snooze button, the empty pint glasses, the status updates. You read it in the faces of the people sitting across from you on the train. You read it everywhere. And it's about time you started writing back. I wrote this poem because I read it everywhere. And it was about time I started writing back. Give that applause going for Liz Greenfield, everyone. about um, shared student housing. It's for uh, anyone who's ever shared a house with somebody who you mistook the house for a toilet and decorated accordingly. And, uh, you'll have to forgive me because I wrote it 30 seconds ago. <laughs> we have been sharing a house for a while now. We've seen each other's best and worst sides, like how I am not the greatest cook and I am lousy to confide in, but I can be relied upon to get homesick overnight and help you feel like a more accomplished person by comparison. I disapprove of your lifestyle. I feel denied my right sometimes to go on eating potato chips and Diet Coke every night, and I flat out refuse to use my own bed, even though my bed is one door down. And speaking of beds, I'm like Tracy Emin, inviting everyone to celebrate in my menstruation, flaunting bodily fluids, throwing towels and tampons on top of bins. I consider myself conservative by politics, not in practice. And I fornicate on the kitchen countertop a lot, and I am not turned off when you reach in for your pizza, turning on the lights to reveal us, squealing in a nervous fit, almost burning off his bits with boiling mozzarella. Can you say jealous? 
and so would if I shower for absolute hours. It helps me to compensate for the dry spells when I am ruled by debilitating fear of water. And you know that I have a crush on you because I feel trapped in my relationships. Forget chivalry. With me, it is all about proximity. And as your housemate, I feel entitled to throw rocks at your window on the seventh floor. If I have left or locked my keys in the door, I will throw rocks regardless. I am a mental adolescent, and it's 5 a.m. and I have no other outlets for my aggression, but I will help you move out. I always help to light your life. Books, DVDs, CDs, except the Depeche Mode. And could you please hurry up and buy the next series of Heroes? I cannot be asked to go to the toilet at night, so I usually just crack open the window for a wait. This is old news to you. You live below me. <laughs> no, I am known to unroll the tinfoil with my hands full and with my forehead. I keep the sheet spread while tearing a piece off with my teeth, and I make this look natural. Where are you going to replace me? And I am sorry for the hamsters that I offered to house it, seriously. Um, without asking your permission first, or if you were allergic. <laughs> and it is unfortunate I've forgotten now who owns the hamsters and the whole, like, the wheels and the cardboard and stuff. That's all here indefinitely. But if it's any consolation, you're not. Not if it's up to me. Who knew having housemates was so political? Thank you. Okay, again, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it and really think about it. Talk about hitting the ground running. Two great poems. Think about it. Okay, on three. Everyone ready? I don't care if you're not. One, two, three. Hold them up. Oh. oh! Why do you make it difficult for me? Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixteen, ten, eleven. Right. Um, that looks like, from my objective eye, that looks like a early lead for Bath Spa, ladies and gentlemen. Let's raise your hands. Two great poems, two great poems. Okay, next, next set of two. Who we got? Who we got from? We got Hannah, and who we got? We got, um, what's your name again? <laughs> I said that was a joke, I know it's you. Jack. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, as Birmingham's going first, please welcome, of course, the one female member of the Birmingham team, the Earthquaker! <laughs> I don't call her that because she creates shakes, she's just a bit religious and a little bit dirty. But, um, <laughs> if you can please welcome to the stage, Hannah Morley, ladies and gentlemen. This is how I would make you a perfect day. You said you were feeling blue, so I have taken over the city centre and told everyone to take the day off and they have gone for lunch at their mother's or to the beach. And today the city is a playground for me and you. I have taken buckets of bouncy balls and thrown them at the walls of the rotunda and off Spaghetti Junction and traced the arc of their descent with brightly coloured ribbons. And I have fetched the animals from Dudley Zoo for a day trip on the understanding that they won't try and eat one another and they are mostly playing hide and seek on Broad Street. <laughs> and if you like, you can spend the day playing in the ball ring. On the top floor, I've had bakers recreate every one of your birthday cakes and I have made big glass bowls of jelly in the precise shades of the rainbow. The middle floor is a fort, which I have built out of the furniture from the shop window displays and guarded by the mannequins. And I have polished the bottom floor super smooth so that, and put um, fluffy socks at every entrance and escalator so that we can slide from Selfridges to Debenhams with a good run up. And if you feel like being more cultured, I have rearranged the art gallery too so they only have your favourite band posters and pictures of me and you pulling faces and those things you made out of macaroni that you, your mum stuck on the fridge and forgot. And in the evening, we will go to the town hall which I have carpeted in mattresses and glitter will fall softly from the ceiling as if I had separated the fine points of light that reflect on raindrops or distilled the decadence of snow without the chill and the damp. I will even remake the weather for you today. And all our friends will be there and they will have to wear their pyjamas or else their favourite t-shirts and they will only play your favourite records and all the drinks will have umbrellas in. But if you feel like staying home, I have a frozen pizza and rented a movie too. Thank you very much. I love 
the man whose full name amounts to two syllables. Please welcome Jack Dean, everyone. In July, on the hot nights, I switch on all the spotlights, open every window and let the moths fly. Through the bedroom, hallway, kitchen, flickering epileptic flaps of nightshade hurtling towards the nearest lamp where they... <laughs> Frantic like Frankenstein fleeing the mob like those bulbs might embrace them and lead them to God or bring back the brightness of being they lost. On the cool afternoons I rock up under Tesco trees with cheap sandwiches and let the conveyor belt of humanity roll by. The trannies, the grannies, the full-time nannies and the part-time daddies. Miscellaneous melancholy of dark blobs on the hill. The side of fumes of lost Sundays playing overture to far-off dogs and frisbees. Sometimes making words rhyme is not nearly enough. And trying to explain it all is like chicken scratching a phrase in chalk on a thousand mile Israeli wall. So I throw that doubt soaked paper to the wind and tread light over the city like the pavement cracks could swallow me whole. Then I look down at the brand new shoes I bought to impress my brand new girlfriend and I think, you die alone anyway. So I start pegging it, jumping in every puddle, kicking up every pebble, picking up speed, sights on a higher level, arms outstretched like the boys we were who dive bomb climbing frame Dresdens. Yeah, kamikaze boy, hurricane bachelor with laces everywhere, leave the lonely places and the stony faces buried there, hop along its shoes and grab the feet of Peter Pan. Till they find me in a Michael Jackson mess on London Road, dirt in my mouth. Mud on my name, curled into a ball, mumbling, Bon Caroline Duffy. Bon Caroline Duffy. Bon Duffy. Not all of us get to be butterflies, those sexy technicolor stripes that flutter by. Some of us are moths, dull, lost, banging our heads against any surface that might bring us warmth or light. But when the sun rises, we will swarm out like children on the first day of snow. Something goes and joy. Another round of applause. Hannah Morley and Jack Dean, everyone. You know the rules by now. You're not idiots. Take ten. Think about it. Jack, who is who? Who is who? Who is Bart? Fitness council instructor. Um, one, two, three. Let's see the votes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can't you be unanimous for once? Uh, let's have a count. Let's have a count. That looks like another bath spa by the sound of this. Another bath spa. Another bath spa.